اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم درس نمبر 106 سورۃ التوبہ انما الصدقات اندی دا صدقات دی ایکسپینڈیچرز ار فور ہو للفقراء والمساکین ار فور دا پور اینڈ فور دا نیڈی ان دس آیا دوز ہو ڈیزرو a share of zakat they are mentioned what is zakat zakat is one of the five pillars of islam it's an obligation and in this surah we have learned that we cannot differentiate between salat and zakat that if a person prays the salah he gives a zakat and that is a sign of his islam that's a sign of his iman He should be accepted as a believer. فَإِخْوَانُكُمْ Then they're your brothers. So salat and zakat, they cannot be differentiated. They're an obligation. And zakat, if a person does not pay on his wealth, and instead he hoards it, then again we learned of the punishment for this crime. يَوْمَ يُحْمَ عَلَيْهَا فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ فَتُكْوَى بِهَا جِبَاهُهُمْ وَجُنُوبُهُمْ So, If a person does not give zakat, there are severe consequences in the hereafter. Now in this ayah we learn that when a person gives zakat, who should he give it to? Who does zakat go to? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ Indeed the sadaqat, a sadaqat is a plural of sadaqah. And what is sadaqah? Charity. Sadaqah is of two types. One is nafil, voluntary, and the other is wajib, mandatory, obligatory charity. Voluntary charity is that, for example, a person, every month, he gives a certain amount of wealth to the poor. A certain percentage he spends on the poor. He donates, let's say, food items in the local food bank. That is what? Voluntary charity. Mandatory charity, wajib zakat, is what? Zakat. What is it? Zakat. Which is given on a particular, in a specific type of wealth, on a specific amount of wealth, at a specific time. Like for example, if a person has a lot of diamonds, he's not required to give zakat on that. On precious stones and gemstones, there is no zakat. It has to be specific type, like for example, gold, silver. Similarly, if a person has a house and he's living in it, and he only intends to live in that house, he doesn't intend to sell it and make money out of it, he's bought that house to live in it. So, on that house as well, there's no zakat. But if he purchases a piece of land and he wishes to sell it in a few years to make money off of it, what does that mean? He has to pay zakat on it. So zakat is paid only on specific type of wealth secondly it has to be a specific amount because you have one gold ring one gold ring that weighs only a few ounces only a few one gold ring on that again there is no zakat it has to be a specific amount it has to reach the threshold which inshallah you will learn in the fiqh of zakat when you will study that subject So specific type, specific amount, and also at a specific time. Like for example, you go and purchase a gold set. A gold set for yourself. Let's say oh, a lot of bangles, a whole set. Now, it doesn't mean you have to give zakat on the first day. When are you going to give it? After one year has passed. So... You've taken the zakat up. Who will you give it to? A random person? No, you have to make sure that it goes to the right people. So in this ayah, what is mentioned? Those to whom the zakat is to be given. Who does it go to? First of all, lil fuqara, for the poor. I want you to notice something in this ayah. If you look at the ayah, lil fuqara, wal masakin, wal amilina, wal muallafati. This is all lam. And this lam is known as lam of tamlik, of possession. In the sense that it is supposed to be given to these people. 
It is supposed to be given to these people. But then you read, وَفِرْ رِقَابِ وَفِرْ رِقَابِ And that is connected with وَالْغَارِمِينَ وَفِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ So what does that fee indicate? In the cause of. Do you understand? So zakat is to be given to certain individuals and at the same time it is supposed to be given for certain causes. One is to give zakat in the hand of a poor person so that he can go buy food, buy clothes, etc. The other is to put zakat in a donation box so that the electricity bill, for example, can be paid. Now, whose pocket is it going to? Nobody's pocket. It's going in the cause. So zakat is not just for individuals, but it is also for causes. First of all, it is for who? Al-Fuqara. Al-Fuqara is a plural of faqir. Who is a faqir? Someone who is extremely poor. It's basically derived from the word faqra, which is a part of the spine. And faqira is that which breaks the spine. A back-breaking thing. And faqr is what? Back-breaking poverty. What does it mean? That a person is overwhelmed by that poverty. He doesn't have anything at all. He doesn't have any means to earn wealth. And he is so poor that he does not have enough to even feed himself. Forget about feeding his family. He doesn't even have meal for one person. Faqir is described as someone who neither has wealth nor does he have any kasab, any means of acquiring wealth. So for example, someone who does not have any money in his bank account and at the same time, he doesn't even have a job. At the same time, he does not get any money from the welfare. So basically, a person who does not have any kind of income, he doesn't have any wealth. Who is a faqir? We learned that from a hadith that is reported in Abu Dawood, that a person who has 50 dirham, or its equivalent. 50 dirham or its equivalent. He is ghani, not faqir. So one who has less than that, less than 50 dirham, who is he? A faqir. So, first of all, the zakat is to be given to who? Those who are fuqara. The Prophet ﷺ said, the sadaqah should not be given to the wealthy and the physically fit. Those who are wealthy and those who are physically fit, they don't get a share in sadaqa. Who gets a share? Someone who is extremely poor. Wal masakin. Secondly, zakat goes to who? The masakin. Masakin is a plural of miskin. Who is miskin? Someone who is poor as well. But how is miskin different from faqir? Miskin is from sakana, which means to be stationary, to be immobile, to become still. So a miskeen is someone who is immobile, who cannot go here and there because of his poverty. He has some, but he does not have enough. Like for example, a person has enough money that he can buy food. But he doesn't have enough money to pay for the bus to get to the grocery store. Do you get it? Not that he is going to a grocery store that's very far off and he wants to make sure that he goes there. No. He does not have enough to fulfill his needs. He does not have enough to fulfill his needs. So how is a faqir different from miskin? Who is faqir? One who doesn't have any wealth nor any kasb. Miskin is described as someone who has wealth and also has kasb, also has a means of acquiring wealth. He is employed. He has a job. But it's not enough. Like for example in Surah Al-Kahf, we learn, أَمَّا السَّفِينَةُ فَكَانَتْ لِمَسَاكِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ فِي الْبَحْرِ As for the ship, it belonged to who? To miskeen people, who used to work in the sea. So what does it mean? They were employed. They had some means of making money. But what they had was not enough. Do you understand? 
what they had was not enough. So zakat is also to be given to those. The Prophet ﷺ said, the miskeen is not the one who goes around the people and he asks them for a mouthful or two of meals. Not the one who is going begging for food or a date or two. So basically a miskeen is not a beggar. So the Sahaba asked, then who is the miskeen? The Prophet ﷺ said, the one who does not have enough to satisfy his needs. The one who does not have enough to satisfy his needs. Let's say he has a few dates. He can buy his breakfast, but he does not know what he's going to eat for lunch. He does not have enough to satisfy his needs. And whose condition is not known to others. His condition is not known to others. Because of faqir, what does he do? He goes to people begging. A miskeen will not go begging. He will stay at home. He will not go beg before people. His condition is therefore unknown to other people. And because it's unknown, other people do not even give something in charity. And at the same time, he does not beg of people. So what do we learn? That zakat should be given to the fuqara, those who come and beg, and also the masakin, those who don't come and beg. Those who don't have enough. Those who are needy. Their needs are not fulfilled. But we have to see. Needs do not mean that a person must have a car. Or that a person must have a house that is fully paid off. This is not a need. What is a need? What is a necessity? That a person has basics. He has a shelter to live in. He has some means of going about the city. So for example, if he does not have a car, maybe the family has a shared car. It's not that the husband has a car, the wife has a car. They have one car, for example, to share. Yes, it's not the latest model, it's very old, but it's fulfilling their need. So miskeen is who? Someone whose need is not fulfilled. Zakat is to be given to them. So it doesn't mean that if your friend comes and says, that you know, I I want to buy a new car this year, and uh, my car is very old, I'd like to get a newer model. I'd like to upgrade. Can you give me your zakat money? You can't do that. And you say, okay, miskeen is someone whose needs are not fulfilled. Her need is the latest BMW and uh, she wishes to upgrade to this year's model. So therefore I'm going to give her my zakat. It's going to help her. No. That's not correct. Who is it going to go to? Someone who does not even have a car, let's say. Or someone who's driving a car that is extremely old, that breaks down, the heating does not work, for example. It's supposed to be disposed of, but they're still driving it because they are they're extremely needy and they don't have enough. You know, they say hand to mouth. This is the state of that person. Then, who else should zakat go to? عَلَيْهَا And those who work عَلَيْهَا upon it. What does it mean by this? Those who are appointed to work for the zakat. What does it mean by working for the zakat? Working to collect it, to calculate it, to take it to the Baytul Mal, and then distribute it amongst people. So those people who have been officially employed by the Muslim government, who are they? Officially employed. By who? By the Muslim government To collect the zakat To calculate the zakat To record the zakat To keep its accounts To guard it And then finally to distribute it There are several steps that are taken For zakat to be taken from one person To be given to the other So those who are involved in such work A wage is going to be given to them From which money? From zakat only if he's poor? No. Not only if he's poor. Whether he is needy or not, zakat is still to be given to him. What did we learn earlier? That al fuqara and masakin, they're being given zakat. Why? Because of their poverty. But al amilin alayha, those who have been appointed to work for the zakat, they are being given a portion of zakat. Why? 
because of their service, because of the work that they're doing, not because they're needy. Not because they're needy, but because they're doing something. Because they are working. Now, there is a question over here. A person who is working to collect the zakat, to calculate it, etc., etc., he is helping someone perform an obligation. He's assisting someone perform an obligation. So why should he take money for it? Why should he take money for it? Is that halal for him? Is that lawful for him? It is lawful for him. But how? Why? Okay. Because he's giving his time. What else? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said so. Yes. Why else? Okay, that's his means of livelihood. Good. Yes, very true. That when you're seeing wealth all the time, that you're going and calculating somebody's money, then you're taking it and you're depositing it somewhere, and over there you're guarding it. Naturally, you will develop some kind of love for it. So if a person knows that I have a share from this, it doesn't matter, I'll get my share, he'll be content. There are more chances of him being honest. I, for example, somebody was mentioning to me that in a certain country, the police, their um, education is free, their residence is free, their health care is free, everything is free. Those people who work as police officers. And the money that they're given, it's just like a pocket money, literally. Why? So that there is no corruption. There is no corruption. In other places we see that where the police officers, they only get a wage, what happens? They will charge people bribe. You give me this much money, I will not give you a ticket. It happens. So when people are given a share of it, there will be more honesty. They will not have any greed for that wealth. There will not be any corruption. Basically, the principle is that there are two types of fadl, right? One is fadl, ain. That is an individual obligation. If a person is performing a fadl ain, he cannot take a wage for it. It is haram on him. Like for example, the mother says to the child, you pray every salah and I will give you five dollars for each salah. This is wrong. You cannot give a wage to someone for doing something that is an obligation on them, which is fard ain on them. The other type of fard is fard kifaya. Which is that if some people perform that obligation, it is enough for everybody. So if a person is given a wage for performing a fard kifaya, that is permissible. If a person is given a wage for performing fard kifaya, that is permissible. For example, a person washes the dead or leads the janazah for the deceased. Or a person becomes the imam of a masjid. Now the imam of the masjid, he is performing his own salah. That's fard ain on him. But because he is leading the salah, that is what? Fard kifaya. If some people lead, it's enough. Because everybody cannot lead over there, right? Only one person can lead. So if he is staying over there to lead the salah, to teach people, whatever, then in that case, it is okay. Why? Because he is offering a service for the benefit of who? The whole community. وَالْعَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا They are performing a fard kifaya. Similarly, عَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا What are they doing? What kind of work are they doing? Collecting zakat, distributing. This is fard kifaya. This is not fard ayin. It's not an obligation on that individual. But if he does it, it's an obligation on the entire community. And he's providing that service for the benefit of that entire community. So from this, it is derived that if a person is performing fard kifaya, then he can take a wage for it. Because sometimes people say, if a person is an imam at the masjid, why is he taking a wage? He should do it fi sabilillah. If a person is an instructor in an Islamic institute, he should not take a wage. They should not charge any fees. And they should spend out of their own pockets. They should do everything lillah. Okay, they should do it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said over here, وَالْعَامِرِينَ عَلَيْهَا They get a share from what? From the zakat. This is not sadaqah. 
This is from zakat. We think zakat is only for the poor and needy, for those people who are hungry and poor. But what do we learn from here? Zakat is not just for the poor and needy. It also goes for those who are performing a fard kifaya. Umar anhu, when he was a khalifa, he appointed someone to collect the zakat. So when he collected it, Umar anhu gave him a share of it. He said, no, no, I don't need it. I'm doing this only for the sake of Allah. So Umar anhu said, don't do that. I used to do the same thing. That when something would be brought to the Prophet ﷺ and he would give me a part of it, I would say, give it to someone else. I don't need it. Give it to someone else. But the Prophet ﷺ told me that take it, increase your wealth, and then give sadaqah from it. So what is the principle? That if a person is performing a fard kifaya, let's say he's an instructor at an Islamic institute, he is working at the reception. He is working, let's say, to clean or to manage or to keep the accounts. Whatever kind of work he is doing for an Islamic cause. That is what? Fard kifaya. If he is doing it, he may take a wage for it. However, there are certain conditions. What are they? First of all, he must not set a condition. In the sense that only if you give me $3,000 every month, then I will come and do your work. If you give me $2,500, i am sorry, I will not provide my services. A person should not set a condition. Rather, he should leave it to who? To the organizers. That whatever they can afford, they will give that. A person should not set a condition. Only if you offer me this much, then I will work. Like for example, people go to companies and they give their resumes. What do they say? That this is the money that they expect. If they don't get that much or more, they will not work over there. When a person is working fee sabilillah, he should not set a condition. Secondly, he should not take it by himself. He should not say, okay, I am collecting all of this zakat, I am also supposed to get a share, let me just take this much of it. Or a person is managing the funds of a masjid. Let's say the imam of the masjid, he is supposed to take care of the donation boxes. He empties out those boxes and he says, you know, I'm also supposed to get a share in it. Technically, I'm amalina alayha. Yes, I'm a volunteer. I don't get a wage. But however, technically I have a share in it. Let me just take it myself. He cannot take it himself. If he does it, that would be theft. It has to be declared. It has to be fixed. It has to be known. And it has to be appointed by someone who is higher than him in authority. So for example, in an organization, an Islamic organization, that's the people who are running a masjid. Each person is given a wage. It's lawful for them. And it's not unrighteous of them if they take a wage. Remember that. It's not at all unrighteous of them. It's lawful for them completely. But the person cannot say by himself, let me just go, I need money, I'll just take it from the donation box. I have the keys to it. He cannot do that. It has to be declared, it has to be agreed upon, and it has to be fixed. Similarly, a person should not have any greed for that wealth. Then he looks at that wealth, he has greed for it, and he says, oh, one day finally I will have it. He should not think like this. So, وَالْعَامِلِينَ alayha, They get a share in it as well. We see that Umar anhu, when he was a Khalifa, he appointed one out of every 20 houses in the Muslim empire as an Islamic school. Every 20 houses, one was what? An Islamic school. To teach people how to read Quran, how to pray salah. Because when the Muslims, when they conquered Rome and Persia, etc., etc., so many lands were conquered, people spoke different languages. People did not know the Quran. Everybody did not know the Quran. And at that time, you didn't have mushafs available and CDs available and all of the stuff available that a person, if he wishes to learn, he can just go on the internet and start learning. No. So he appointed one out of every 20 houses to be an Islamic school. And those people who used to teach, they were given a wage from the Baytul Mal. Because they were performing what? A fard kifaya. They were performing a fard kifaya. 
And if this work is not done, if this work is not done, then how will Islamic knowledge spread? How? How will it spread? We see that so many scholars, they were not Arabs. They were not Arabs originally. Imam Bukhari was not an Arab. He wasn't. So, we see that because he made the system, he set up the system, and people were given a wage from the Baytul Mal, this is why the work increased. It spread so much. We say that everybody should be a volunteer. That's good. Everybody should be a volunteer. But many times, volunteers, they lose their spirit. It happens with so many people. They start their work with a lot of zeal. And eventually they say, I don't want to do it anymore. Besides, I'm only volunteering. I can walk away whenever I want. But if somebody is employed, then what happens? They become more serious about their work. And as we discussed earlier, there is more chances of honesty. There are more chances of honesty. So, وَالْعَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا They also get a share from the zakat. Now, what if a person wants to do something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is that wrong? Should he definitely take a wage? No, it's not an obligation. However, those who are taking it, they should not think that those who are not taking it are doing something better. Those who are not taking it, they should not think that what they are doing is much better than those who are taking a wage. Why? Because a choice has been given. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set this share. Just as when people are traveling, we are allowed to fast or not fast. So a person who is fasting in his journey, he should not consider himself to be more pious than those who are not fasting. Similarly, a person who is not fasting, he should not consider himself to be more pious than the person who is fasting. Why? Because both options are permissible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept both of these options. Similarly over here, a person is allowed to take a wage from an Islamic organization for the service that he's providing. And he's also allowed not to take. The permission is there. Whatever you are comfortable with, whatever your situation allows, you do that. If you want to do it only for the sake of Allah and you don't want to take any penny for it, why? Because you want all of your reward reserved for the hereafter. You're more than welcome to do that. And hope for more reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we learned, those who strive in the way of Allah with their wealth and also with their self. That's definitely a darajah that is higher. However, if a person is taking a wage, at the same time, he should not consider that maybe what I'm doing is not that righteous. It's okay because Allah has set a share over here. وَالْعَامِلِينَ alayha. So those people who are offering services for the deen, they are performing a fard kifaya, they are allowed to take a wage. As long as, what are the conditions? It's not fixed in the sense that it's not a condition to their offering their services. Similarly, there should be no greed for it. 